All right, is there something up over here in YouTube that's blocking it? Huh. Snap, man. What's going on? Oh, live chat. Hmm. Okay. All right, I think it's going. It's got a hell of a delay, guys. It's at least one minute, maybe even pushing two minute delay. I'm going to wait for it to catch up to this point and then I'll get going. All right, what's up, everyone? I guess it's going to be learning curves. You know, I'm new to the whole uh, live, but we're just going to do it because I really want to take this opportunity to be able to connect with everyone. Uh, you know, I was having a discussion with uh, a friend of mine the other day who's also a web designer. You know, we're talking about, you know, doing this, the content creation, doing the community you know, building the communities for web creatives, uh, things like that versus working for clients and doing work for clients. I love doing work for clients. You know, uh, I've had an amazing career doing this. Like, I'm so blessed to be able to do this kind of work, make a good living out of it. But there's something just so much more rewarding when uh, doing stuff like this and connecting with web creators. And that's because I'm connecting with people just like me. Like, it's like my type of people. Like, when we talk about web design, when we talk about clients, when we talk about our struggles, our challenges, the things that we're learning, it's just we have that connection. So I'm really glad to be doing this. All right, what's up, everyone? I'm catching up on the chat right now. I want to make sure that uh, I want to make sure I catch all questions and stuff. Uh, good to see you, Pez. Good to see you, Pentola. Dope, dope, dope. All right. I'm excited for tonight. Tonight's going to be fun. All right. Because, uh, you know, I've been looking at trends, design trends. And, uh, well, I'm going to take it back a little bit more. You know, when 2022 rolled out, I wanted to start off the year with a couple of videos. Like, you know, what are the top design trends to look for 2022? Also, where to start as a web designer or a web creator or somebody who wants to make a living in a business building, building websites. Where to start in 2022? And, well, I, I was just busy running my agency. I didn't get a chance to make them. So now 2023 rolled along. I'm like, okay, I, I, I've been wanting to make these videos and I feel it's really helpful because I know when I started creating websites in, uh, you know, when I started creating them, it was about six years ago. It was different. You know, we had to use themes from like Theme Forest, you know, how to learn how to do custom themes and the learning curve was different and the things to focus on was a lot different versus what a web creator needs to learn today in order to jumpstart their career and get on the right path. So having that kind of updated information is important. But I just thought, instead of just making a video, let's do some lives. Because a topic like this, you know, uh, a topic like, where do I go as a web creator? What should I be learning? What direction should I go in? This is more of a discussion. You know, this is a lot more to it. All right, going back to the chat, let me check it out. Uh, what's up, Charlie? Are you in Thailand too? Or you just know I'm out here saying what's up? Cool, cool. Hey, and just an update, everybody. Uh, I do have plans. I'm going to be rolling this out weekly for quite some time. I want to roll it out weekly. But I do have uh, some guests as well, some other web designers, some agency owners, and some other YouTubers that you probably also watch. But I have uh, some other guests I'm going to be bringing on. We're going to start having conversations. And same thing, discussions with us. They're going to be able to provide like valuable information and insights. And then also just that open communication with all of you, myself, and whoever else I bring on. 
Ah, oh, Phuket. Man, Charlie, I was in Phuket uh, when COVID hit. It was perfect because, <laughs> like, the island was empty. I literally had beaches to myself. Uh, yeah, some pros and cons to COVID, but definitely being able to spend time on a deserted island was super, it's just such a blessing, man. But that was what web design did for me, man. And Victor, what's up, Victor? How you doing, man? So good to see you, man. All right, I'm going to try to say it. I can't say it. <laughs> I can't say it, but what's up, man? What's up all the way to South Africa? That's so dope. And Pentola from Italy. Man, this is this is amazing, you know. Like for me, I grew up in a small block, you know, a small neighborhood where I never left out of. It wasn't small. I mean, it was Los Angeles, it was huge, but still, you're just stuck in one spot. You never think that you'd be building these kind of connections. Uh, with like-minded people around the world. You know, this is awesome. All right, so check it out. I'm going to kick it off. And I want to kick everything off with uh, looking at some design trends for 2023. Uh, all right. I put some thought into this. All right, I was putting some thought into this. And then I was also checking out some other content, looking what other designers and other creatives are looking excuse me, looking at for this coming year in design, in web design, specifically web design. I only focus on web design, really. And what I notice is there are two different areas for like web design trends or, you know, to, uh, to show web design trends. All right, and let me explain real quick. So the first one that I saw was, you know, the cool ones, the ones that look super dope to us, to us designers, designs meant for designers. You know what I mean? And that's things that we would see like on awards.com. Got just stuff that I could never, you know, I, things that are just like way out of my scope of what I could build, like just super dope things where you're scrolling, all kinds of stuff is happening, 3D stuff turning around, all kinds of ill stuff. So there are those trends coming out. But I look at those as well as like those are designs for designers. Those are designs to showcase the best of what designers could do of creatives. There is another avenue though. There's another uh, uh, type of design trends. And those are going to be more of the realistic of what kind of designs would us as designers, as web creators that are making websites for clients, what styles are going to be up to date and going to be practical? You know, because when you look at a lot of the sites on awards, phenomenal. I mean, they're the works of art. I really feel that way. I feel like they're art, you know, but we're not going to create an art, like a piece of art for a local company or for even a big brand. If something needs to sell, we need to get conversions. We have a purpose to, we got a message and a connection we got to build with the brand and the client. And that right there, I feel is a difference between the two types of design uh, trends and inspirations and things. We got the ones that are just works of art on awards.com and we got the more practical. Now I want to look at the more practical because I feel those are going to be what we use. I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm going to open it up as well. Want to make sure we're open up. So that way you got, uh, you guys could ask anything and wow, I'm seeing so many people here. I've been just so fortunate enough to build connections with for like the last couple of years. This is awesome. What's up everyone. Hey, Vivian, Claudius, I'm going to say Victor from Brazil. All right. Dope, dope. All right, check it out, everyone. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to do a screen share. I'm still going to be able to see uh, the chat. I got a screen over here. So if you see my head pivoting, I want to make sure I open this up. I want this to be big so I can see it. All right, let me go ahead and do a screen share real quick. All right, 
I'm going to check my iPad, wait for the latency to catch up. So that way I know that you guys are actually looking at a screen share. It should be. Ah, <laughs> dope, Victor. Awesome, man. Yeah, Pez. Yeah, same here, man. We're on this. We're on the same track. Definitely, if we're building a website for a local business or really any business, you know, it, it's not about how how much you know trying to make it artistic. Thing is, like. Uh, you know, and it, it took me a while to realize this. I know, like, for the first few years when I built websites, I was doing it to build my portfolio. I wanted to improve my skills. I love being super creative. Uh, but that was also a mistake that I was making because I was designing for me. I was designing for my portfolio. And what I found was as a creative that is building a product for a client what we actually should be designing for is the end user we're not even designing for the client you know that's why i like to do user personas with all the clients that we do before we even start the design process uh that way we have a good idea of who this is for that way we approach the design and the whole process for them because the things are scrolling around and doing all kinds of stuff it's cool to us but not for the end user is the screen share showing? True, true, true. All right. I don't even know if the screen share is showing yet. This has got some either a hella latency or uh, the screen share isn't showing. Let me try to see here. I want to make sure I'm looking at the right thing. All right, I'm going to raise my hand so I can kind of like see where I'm at. Hey, guys, thank you for uh, your patience on this. Still a bit of a learning curve. Uh, Claudius, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Definitely. Okay, so the screen share isn't going. Let me try to see why it's not going. What are you guys looking at? Why isn't this going? Snap, I got like uh, quite a bit of websites, a presentation that I do want to show. Last time it worked smoothly. Hmm. No, it's not showing it. Hey, sorry everyone. I don't know why this is not showing my screen. Hmm. I think I just figured it out. <laughs> Man. It's all right, I'll get this going.
All right, so I don't know why the screen share isn't showing. Could anybody let me know if the screen share has showed for them? Maybe I'm tripping, but uh, got my iPad right here to kind of see what you guys are seeing. Ah, oh, thanks, Victor. Appreciate it. You can see the cold sweat, right? <laughs> What's up, Eve Cam? Come on, don't let me down. I got some. I got some dope stuff to show. I want to geek out. <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. Huh. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Charlie. I, I, it's all set up on the app. It shows it should be doing it. Hmm. Okay, that shouldn't have happened. All right. You know what? I think I got to dip off and then come back on to get this working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going, oh, that kind of sucks. It's going to break it all up. <laughs> oh, this shouldn't be happening. You know what? I guess we're going to have to save it for the next time. Hey, there we go. It's showing. Okay. I can see it. All right. Snap. All right, now you can see the craziness that I'm looking at right over here. All right, dude, let's go ahead and do this. Let me get some of my mushroom tea really quick. Mm, I got some stuff here to show. All right, cool. So I have been looking at styles. And now, first, I think it's important for me to let you know how I come up with and how I look for current trends. I'm looking at what the big guys are doing. You know, I'm looking what the apples are doing. I'm looking what the slacks are doing with the drop boxes. I'm looking at what the really big companies that continuously refresh their design styles or their brands. I'm looking at them because they have the research. They have the talent pool. They got some of the best talent in the world. They're investing some of the most money for their designs and to keep updating it and keeping it fresh. So for me, I like to look at those. I don't really go to dribble anymore. Uh, awards, I like going there for fun and inspiration. I still go to dribble for a little bit of inspiration, but I'm looking at the new apps coming out, the new software coming out. I'm looking at who can invest in the top design. So that's where I found this at. Now, the first one. I see this coming out a lot. That's going to be creative grids and blocks. And let me show a few of them. So the grids. And we're talking about like CSS grids. Something like that. Like, let me see. Something like this right here. You can see the creative grids. It's not a basic one, two, three, one, two, three. It's a grid. It's completely aligned, but it's got different sizing in there. So I really see this trend starting to come out a lot more this year. All right, cool. I can still see the screen share. Now, in Elementor might be, you know, in Elementor, this is more than possible with containers. I know now with Bricks, now that Bricks has a CSS grid in it, I can't wait to experiment more with that. But this right here, I'm really looking out for, and I plan on using this a lot of my design styles coming up. Let's take a look at a few more. So this one, you can see also right here, a use of the grids. Even though you got like three even right here, you know, you still have another extra grid. You're having these more creative grids and it's still in this block like, 
you could just change the sizes of the blocks to make one full block. I'm just going to go ahead and keep pulling things up because I got tons of websites. I was geeking out. All right. Here's another one, Fathom. This one's pretty cool up over here. Let me see. You know, you can see another example right here of a creative grid. And let me know what you guys think as well. In fact, I got to find out where that, I got to keep that chat up here. All right, cool. <laughs> That's right, Housewives of Light. Boom, we got it. All right, cool. Yeah, let me know as well as what do you think about these, uh, uh, these styles as I'm pulling them up. All right, another one would be Framer. Now, again, this is where I'm finding my design inspiration. You know, when you see a design company that's building design tools, that, that like Framer, they revamp their designs quite often. You know they got some of the best designers doing this right here. All right, we can see more of their grid styles right here. All right, we don't need to see my emails right here all right see these creative grids right here they create one full block so i think this is something to look out for you could see the details in it uh it's very pleasing to the eye but it's a symmetry the symmetry it has something of that uh subconscious uh way that just like makes it easy for us to consume so when you're doing a style like this i could totally see having each one of these blocks as something important in each and grabbing the attention from the user while not just pummeling them with information, especially information that is scattered. It's really pleasing for the eye. Let me see, and then we got Ionic, and you know what, my window keeps getting blocked here. Okay, uh, Pentello. Okay, I like the way that you put that card mosaic style. Uh, I like that way that sounds right there. I just made up creative grids, <laughs> but mosaic definitely sounds good. And then same here. This is a very clean uh, side here. We can see it used again over here. And I like how it's being used in this way because it's being used where we have the main call to action right here. But the call to action is surrounded with a couple other cards that all fit within that block uh, that gives those details. So, yeah, this is definitely one of those styles to look at. Now, another one is just blocks in general. You know, I do think generate blocks and the default WordPress are going to see a lot more of that going forward. And with these kind of block styles, it's really, you know, like someone else said it inside the chat. You know who said it? Uh, yeah, Pentola, definitely. Uh, it's the easy, the simple. I, I, first off, I don't like to say the word simple and easy when describing the, 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 our work I do because making something look simple and easy is actually quite difficult and takes a lot of time to learn. But making it look minimal, making it look clean, uh, definitely is going to perform very well. So having just block styles, just styles inside blocks, I see this coming up a lot along with the mosaic ones as well. So I definitely would be playing with those and looking with those more. Now, here's a website. I'm sure many of you have seen it. I love this one right here. I've also got Motion Page. I'm testing it out right now. Uh, but here is a really clean one as well. They just use blocks. It's minimal. It's really easy to take in. And definitely block styles are something to look forward to coming up inside this year. This is still ahead of the curve. All right, I got to make sure this is in the front. Elegance with minimalism, for sure, Claudius, for sure. All right, so... That was design style number one that I'm looking at. It's one of the ones that I'm going to be using a lot coming up. I think that we have uh, a lot of really creative ways we could play with it, but we could also keep it minimalistic and elegant, like Claudia said. Now, let's go on to another type of style. And this is going to be 
Let me see here. Oh, man, I jumped ahead. It's going to be grotesque fonts. Now, this is a different font style than one that I'm actually using right here. Uh, let's go ahead and pull something up for grotesque fonts. Now, grotesque fonts, they're... They're a sans serif font. They're a sans serif font, but they're more crazy, <laughs> I guess you could say. Uh, they're more, uh, they got more of these, uh, uh, these indents. They got more of these curves happening on it. So we could see, like, we're going to see a lot more of these. You might already be noticing this trend. But having these grotesque font, these more creative type fonts, some of them are going to be more wide like this. Some of them are going to be thin, uh, but we're going to start seeing a lot more of these. Let me pull up some more. Here's one SEO Press Pro. Uh, this is one of my, this is my go-to uh, SEO plugin, but they did an awesome job. I love their font right here. And this is really grotesque right here. You see like that R what we have happening over there. So there's some mild grotesque and then there's some extreme grotesque this one is more on the extreme side but it's super dope it's creative and we're seeing this come up a whole lot more and i'll just go ahead and pull up a few more of them you know we can see it happening over here this is a really again this is a dope style right here it just stands out when you use a font like this and then we can see here with gumroad as well Huge, bold, grotesque fonts. All right, this one might not be the best for UI and UX, but it's just an example of like grotesque fonts. And let me see, I got a few more. And I'm going to wrap this one up with Dropbox. Dropbox is now using a grotesque font as their main font. They have a wide one right here. So they're breaking away, you know, from your traditional Google fonts, for sure, your Robotos or Helvetica, or just like the clean, safe fonts, uh, and getting more edgy with these grotesque fonts. So this is a style and a trend to look for. Yo, what's up, Michael? Good to see you here, man. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, Pintola, I do see it in neo-brutalism as well. Uh, with neo brutalism, we could see it in ways like you know, like right here at Gumroad, what they did. Uh, this is pretty dope, right over here. This is definitely got the neo brutalistic style, so we could see it used here, but then we could also see it used in more you know, SaaS or elegant style websites. I could see this being used in fashion websites, I could see this being used in uh, like bakery websites or you know things where there's some creativity going on i feel that this is this kind of stands for something creative now if it's a lawyer website a legal office i might go with something more uh either serif or something more traditional like a traditional sans serif so it all depends on the type of project but definitely going to see this popping up a lot more all right, so going on to the next style that we're going to be seeing a lot of, and that's going to be large type. Now, we already know that when seeing things too small, you can't really read it. It's hard to read. And having tons of text on a web page, tests and studies have shown the more text you have, the worse it's going to do because people's attention spans have, have been trained to just not be there anymore. You got to capture people right away. To have good UI and good UX, somebody should be able to jump to a website and understand it right away. Like what they did right here. Understand your ranking and your traffic. Big and bold. Easy to see. Even the subtext right underneath this. You know, we can see from the subtext, it's right there. It's not hard to read. It's not a bunch of text. Let me pull up a few more. So we can see more right here. It's, it's not just the titles that are big, but it's also the regular text that's a lot bigger. Like this one, let me see, how big is this one? So this is 24 pixels right here. 
you know, where normally we would be using like 16 or 18. Heck, back in the days, people used to use 14 pixels. Uh, but right here, you know, see, look at how a big title like this or just big text, it stands out. And then, and you can see like they're pairing it up with some of the other design trends I was already talking about with the mosaic and the creative uh, blocks. You know, we can see more of them. Um, you know, here we go, Webflow. This is where I get my inspiration. When I want to see where the market is at, what is, you know, trending, I look at the big dogs. And I want to see what are they doing. So if you see Webflow doing something, then you could be safe to bet that this is a current design trend. Because these guys have everything, you know, in the world to invest into super dope design. But then you got like big text like this. Instead of a small paragraph, it's just really big, really easy to read, and it highlights everything instead of having tons of text. Learning with Maha. Yeah, definitely too. I think moving pictures is also there. Or just like having items move on scroll, moving products. Oh, no, this isn't made by me, Maha, for sure. I wish... Uh, no, not this one. This is a Webflow. What we're doing right now is we're looking at, uh, we're just looking at other websites that are setting the trends right now. All right. Another one, Cell X right here. Again, really big. And this is the text right here. So I see a lot of this large text being used. Uh, it just works really well. And then now, too, we could always use, like, calculate in different, uh, different ways to set our font sizes. I still use rem, but in some occasions, I have been playing around with using calc in order to make, say, uh, large text like this just be completely responsive. Hey, Jackie, yeah, for sure. I'll go ahead and list all these sites right here. I'm going to list everything in here inside the description. So that way afterwards you guys can copy and paste them. By the way, I've been using this tool right here. Let me pull it up. I've been using this tool raindrop to start to organize all of my links because I used to use bookmarkers. Now, if you guys have another tool to manage your bookmarks that is like easy to use and like really clean, let me know, drop them inside the comments because I am looking at another tool. Uh, for some other reasons but right now you know like if I, when i see a really dope SaaS design you know i put it inside here so that way i could always go through and use it for my inspiration so i used to use dribble and behance and those for my design inspirations but then everything started looking the same so what i started doing was collecting really dope websites and using live websites as my inspirations all right, so next up, let me get back over here. What's next up? Gradient text title. Oh, I got that wrong, title text. Okay, I'll add a T over there. But yeah, gradient title text. So we've already seen those in some of the uh, some of the some of the websites. I need some mushroom tea, guys. <laughs> Now, if anybody hasn't ever tried to be in a room by yourself talking for an hour, you got to give it a try. You start to question your sanity for sure. <laughs> but it's awesome. You know what? This is dope. I'm really grateful. I'm really, I'm just grateful to be connecting with everyone here. That's super cool. Uh, Akram, let me see. It's Raindrop. Yeah, that's for Akram right there. Uh, so I use Raindrop, and I use just the free version right now. For for now, it's been a while. Ah, learning with Maha. That's cool. So cool, so cool. And this is what it's for. I want to connect with those learning web design. Because I remember when I was learning web design, I was doing it all on my own for years. I was fortunate enough to have a mentor to help me along the way. But still, it gets pretty lonely when you're learning by ourselves. That's the reason why we're going to do this and why I'm going to keep doing this. 
All right, cool, cool. So yeah, let's go back to the trends. So Gradient Text is still there. And yeah, Apple, again, is one of those websites that could go to and be safe to see that, hey, this is a current trend. They're only going to be using things that are current. And I'm sure we could go back to probably most of the websites and we could see a lot of this being used. Let me pull up some. I have a few others right here. All right, here's a dope website. I really dig this one right here. All right, this is from Monspark. And we can see, all right, they're using their gradient text. They got their blocks going on, their creative grids going on. And then using these gradient titles and, and inline, you know, the gradient inlines in here. These are still something that we could utilize definitely for this year. This is a trend that we should be looking at. Tab extended. Okay, cool. I'm going to check that out, Eddie. Thanks. Tab. Okay, cool, cool. Let's see. I got a couple other ones. Here's another one right here. All right, here's a really dope website as well. Now, they didn't put the gradient in the large text here, but they put it in the smaller, like for the call to actions, which I thought was really creative, but also stood out. The way that they use this. And then they're using it inside their subheaders right here. This is a technique that I like to use as well. I like to use small subheaders. I do this for SEO, but I also do this for uh, just for my topography styles and to get, you know, to be able to break up, to be able to break up content. So one of my strategies for SEO is the big titles. These are for the user. The small titles are for Google. So like right here, you know, if I were to do products, products would be like an H2. But then if I were to do like we have this highly unique, da, 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 da. It's a longer title, but it's like meant to connect with the user. It wouldn't have the keywords in it because I wouldn't really care about the keywords. I'm trying to connect to the user with the big title. So that would probably be the H3. Just one of my tricks that I use. All right, there's more tools. All right, so there's a really good bookmarker. Oh, Pez, which one is it? I'm an AppSumo junkie. I, I, I didn't see any of them. I, I, if I would have saw a bookmark, told an AppSumo, I definitely would have picked it up. Yeah, drop that in the comments, Pez, for sure. And Marbly, I'm going to check that out. All right, dope, dope. All right, cool. So we got a few more, just a couple more, actually. The next one is going to be minimal graphics. All right, so I think it was just, what was it, Munspark right here. Check out the graphics on this one. Now, creating graphics like this is something that we don't need to be, like, graphic designers to do, like, just having these minimal graphics right here really sets it apart. We can see it with lines, those vertical lines. Just something minimal in it could really make the designs look dope. And here's another one. Oh, yeah, by the way, this is a tool that I recently just started using. Uh, this is to track productivity. I'm doing the free trial on it right now. I'm going to see how it does after a week. I got two more days, but I've been testing it out. And I do have to say that this week, I have gotten a lot more done than I did next week. So I might just go ahead and get the license for this. It was also an AppSumo deal that I missed out on. I wish I would have got it because that would have been a good AppSumo buy. But see, check out here now. If you could take a look in the background, they got these light graphics right here. Just these minimal background graphics. Now, we could create these with SVGs. I mean, we could do something like open up Figma. We could create a circle. We could create an outline of that circle. You know, remove the inside of it, export it as an SVG. That's a graphic right there. We could put that in the background. You know, it's not taking any space. It's very light. So that way we could keep the website loading fast. And, you know, look at this graphic right here. It's very minimal, but it stands out. So this is a style... I'd also be looking out for. And then the last one. All right, we got one more style. And I have a feeling. Wait, do we got one more or do we got two more? Oh, 
I duplicated that. All right. <laughs> I did this pretty quick right here, but I prepared and looked for the right sites for, you know, for all afternoon. It was fun. It was fun. I love geeking out on them. But all right. This style right here, I have a feeling. I have a feeling it's going to take us uh, a few months at least to start seeing some good websites using them. I'm already seeing websites starting to get creative and using images from like mid journey and starting to use them. But I think that using the AI arts and images, say from like mid journey, I think it's going to take more than just taking an image and just placing it on the website. It's going to take a kind of way to get creative, but a kind of way to make that image work right and to find the right image. Now I've seen uh, I've seen you know videos and stuff like hey I can make a mock up like fifty mock ups in a couple minutes. Uh, but that's not my experience. My experience so far with Mid Journey and with coming up with graphics to use for a website, it's been a lot of learning, a lot of time invested in learning, figuring out first how to use these tools and get the best results. But how do I use these tools to get consistent graphics? Say, for an example, we're going to create a website. In the website, we don't need a bunch of you know graphics that look like a gaming website. We might not even be building a gaming website. It might be you know maybe for an app. It might be for a local business. How can we get a set of images that are all aligned and including like the icons, things like that, making it so it doesn't be too much but still utilizing those graphics so i see this coming up and i see this happening but it's going to be something that i do not think that you could just take really quick from there and slap on a website it's going to take learning so this is a reason why i haven't made any videos yet i'm in the process of working on it but i first want to figure out how to make a proper website a proper functional website you know, not an artistic website, but a website that could be delivered to a client using this tool right here. So I believe that many, many of us web creators are doing the same right now. And the, the YouTube videos coming out are cool. I think it's dope for the YouTube videos coming out, showing us the possibilities because they're giving us a segue. This is a great entry and we're kind of like at that entry point right now. But with that entry point now we got this learning curve and now also like i've noticed recently on mid journey i noticed like other people watching the feeds come up a lot of people are like putting in mock-ups and stuff like that and that's great that means that the ai is going to learn this all right it's going to learn so right now we're just trying to teach it how to create graphics for mock-ups and it's on version four right now, I think. It's going to come up with version five, version six, version seven. And it's just going to keep learning because that's what AI does. So I see that the trend is going to definitely kick in. I see it kicking in the more mid-year and the end year where we're going to see uh, more of like the high-end websites starting to utilize it. It's, it's just a matter of figuring out how to use the AI-generated uh, art and graphics in a way that could work, uh, work in a sustainable way with a website that is practical. All right. I know that was a lot. <laughs> all right, Pez, it's all good. I I'm going to go geek out on, uh, I'll go take a look on AppSumo later. I'm sure I could probably put in the search, uh, bookmarks. I probably should have opened up with AI. <laughs> I think that would have kept a lot of people watching because, you know, it is like the hot topic, but it's all good. Uh, all right, Pintola asks, related to AI, do I think that prompt designer will be a thing in the following years? Huh, that is a really interesting question. I haven't even thought of that. You know, somebody that could look at a prompt. I think a prompt specialist. I think that might happen. You know, because learning prompts is quite, it's challenging. It's why it's taken me a while. You know, it's not why I'm trying to just 
create some images. I mean, I'm playing with them and using them in certain things like posts, but to like really use it to really create prompts. Yeah, I, I, I could see that happening. I could see that as a possibility, like a prompt specialist. Because that's what it really is. You know, it's how are we going to train it? How are we going to communicate with it? And then as quickly as it's growing, it's going to keep changing and evolving. So, you know, like right now, the time, like, for example, the time I'm putting in on it, I could put in a bunch of time for like the next few weeks, get really good at it, start creating some really dope images. But if I stop for like six months and try to jump back in, chances are things are going to change so much. So when it comes back to like a prompt, you know, designer, a prompt specialist, it might need somebody who's just like in it continuously. So that way, you know, I know and I, I could see that happening. I could see that. Yeah, Jared, I know, man, I know that is. Uh, it's, you know, when it comes to like the images on mid journey or the con, you know, the content on on chat GPT, it's like, you know, it's really not clear about the trademarks. I mean, I've gone through the legal details on mid journey and I couldn't really see anything clear. I couldn't see anything saying you can't use it. I couldn't see anything about intellectual property. It's something that just isn't clear right now because it's so new. I kind of like think of this as uh, crypto when it came out, it was so new. There are no regulations. There's nothing, you know, no regulations. And, you know, all the legal infrastructures kind of like scrambled for a while to like get control because, you know, I don't want to get all Illuminati, but, you know, they're, they want to control us for sure. <laughs> Somebody wants to control us. They got to control us. So it's not really controlled yet. We got to see what happens for it. Really, I, I didn't see that. I got to look that up. I didn't see people were getting sued. Jared, was that with uh, Mid Journey? And thanks, Pez. Super dense. Okay, I'm going to get that right after this. Hope everybody caught that bookmark tool. Check out Super Dense. I'm going to check it out right after. Oh, thanks, Jared. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I'm glad you're here. See, this is the kind of stuff right here. And like your your feedback and, and like this kind of discussion really helps out. This is good for all of us. I mean, like me, I didn't even know that companies were getting sued yet. Uh, I try to stay out of the news. and I try to stay, you know, not on social media about what's going on. And that's just to keep my heart and, you know, my peace of mind. But, you know, I need to hear from you guys about this kind of stuff as well. Yeah, I can see chat happening. I can see chat GPT uh, having more issues. I know Google wants to go to war with them. I heard something about that. Google was like, they're going to war with AI uh, text writers. But yeah, yeah, it, it's a matter of time for sure. I think it's going to be a scramble for a while. You know, it's too, it's too new, too fast. Uh, and, and just like, you know, when crypto came out, just there were no rules for it. something new came out and, you know, people don't know how to act. And, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people want to sue. Uh, not a lot, but, you know, some people do. And yeah, I make sure if I am going to use it, though, I'm going to generate it myself. <laughs> nah, I would lobby line. I have played around with other people's art. <laughs> I don't want to lie. Uh, yeah, for sure. Google does not like AI chat. Uh, but Google is AI in itself in a way. You know, it's... Uh, uh, yeah. Either way, what's happening, though, like, I don't know what's, you know, there, what's going to happen with it. But one thing I am 100% certain on is that us as creatives, uh, we got to know this and we should start learning it. And we should start seeing how we could utilize this. Uh, of course, it's going to help out, you know, down the road when more rules and regulations are established. And for us to know how those rules and regulations are so that way we can work within them. That way ourselves or clients aren't getting sued or something like that. 
but uh, we definitely need to be in the loop on this and stay ahead because you know it's like it's a uh, it's a new thing that's coming and it's it's really coming. Yeah, Pez. You know, a lot of a lot of powerful people like Google don't like what they can't control. <laughs> and that's right, Jared. It'll all adapt. So, really quick before we sign off, I want to ask you guys. Now, I uh, I show the design styles that I see trending this year. Are there any design styles that you see trending? Something to look forward to. Something you're interested in. Uh, something that you might want to be playing around with this year. Drop them inside the chat. Ah, thanks, Pentola. So this is a Stable Grotesque, and the creators of it are amazing font designers. Let me go ahead and drop that inside the chat. It's not cheap, though. Got to buy it. And uh, yeah, definitely was not cheap, but the font is dope. I really like these guys right here. So all right, there's a link to uh, the font. This is by Cometa, who created uh, Stable Grotesque. They have some other really nice fonts. If you guys are interested in the fonts, let me know, too. I'm kind of a font junkie. Like, these are all the fonts that I got right here. Like, I'm constantly looking for, like, super dope fonts. Uh, I really love the Grotesque fonts. I like what's happening with them. But, like, things like this. I, I, I'm just always looking for new typography, new fonts uh, to use. That's right, Jared. 100% agree with you. All right, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here and being part of this and for keeping the discussion going. Uh, I'm going to be back next week. I'm going to try to bring on a guest next week. Uh, if you have any topics or anything, uh, make sure to hit me up. Let me know. Uh, you can go ahead and join our Facebook group, the Building Businesses with Elements or on Facebook. Uh, you could also reach out to me on Instagram with lightbox underscore dot co. It might change. I'm about to revamp my Instagram account and actually use it, but that's probably the best way for you to communicate me one on one. Unless if we're connected on Facebook. All right, Pez. Thank you, everyone. Oh, Pentola said 3D Clay Illustrations will be in for a while. Yeah, 3D Clay is super dope. And Jared, take care of that client. <laughs> same day, same time next week. We're going to keep this consistent. We're going to keep it rolling. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining. Have a great rest of, the, rest of the week. Have fun. Be creative. Be productive. All right. Talk to you all soon. And keep designing, Pez says. Awesome, awesome.